Hi. Hope you are having a wonderful Saturday afternoon. Um, just wanted to bring you a little word um, so that you may grow in the knowledge of God. I, I was going to read to you out of the book of First John, and um, it's one of Grandma's favorites. And um, hope you like it. And we will talk about it. And if you have any questions about it. Just put the comment, put questions in the comments and grandma will answer you or just message grandma and grandma will, will message you back about it. But this is the uh, first epistle of John. First John, it says that which from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled the word of life. For the life was manifest, that life that was manifested, he's talking about Jesus, that life was manifested and we have seen it and bear witness. So John's saying, look, I've seen this. I bear witness to you and show unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father and was manifested unto us, talking about Jesus, because Jesus came down, who was manifested unto us, that which we have seen and heard, declare we unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. So John's, uh, John wants, <laughs> John and Grandma <laughs> want you to have fellowship with us in the Father and the knowledge of him and his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things... Write we unto you that your joy may be full. We want you to be full of joy. And uh, knowledge of Christ brings that joy. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declared unto you that God is light. He is light and in him is no darkness at all. No darkness at all. No sin in God. No sin in Jesus. No darkness at all. He is good. He is never bad. If we say that we have fellowship with him, if we say that we belong to Christ, if we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, the light of Jesus Christ, we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. And that's the thing is, is that to walk in the light, you know, we, we got to choose to do what God has commanded us to do. To walk in agreement with him. To walk away from sin and walk in goodness and righteousness and holiness. It's a choice. He says, choose this day whom you're going to serve. Are you going to serve God? Then do what is right. And, uh, and that's how you walk in the light. And if we confess our sins, because sometimes we do have sin, and sometimes we have error, you know, wrong thought, bad attitude. <laughs> or if we've, we've fallen in error, you know, if we've, we've done something we should not have done, we need to confess it and we need to turn away from it and turn back to God. So it says, if we confess our sin, we confess it. So, oh, Lord, forgive me. And, and you know, when we sin against one another, we're not, not, it's not just who we sinned against, but we're sinning ultimately against God. So we not only need to apologize to whoever we've wronged, but we need to apologize to God if we confess our sins. It says, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us, to wash us from all unrighteousness. And it's in that that we can be righteous in Christ. And if we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar for his word is not in us. My little children, <laughs> my, my grandbabies, these things, John writes unto you that we sin not. We're not supposed to sin. We're not supposed to sin. 
But if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous, and he is the propitiation. Propitiation means atoning sacrifice. He died to cover our sins, not so that we could live sinfully, not so that we could live sinfully, but he died to cleanse us from our sin so that we might walk with in righteousness and holiness with him. He, he, was, uh, he is our propitiation is the word, and that means atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the world. He has this gift that he wants to give, but we have to receive him to, to partake of that gift, that atoning sacrifice, because there is a there is a hell, and there are a lot of people in it, and there's a lot of people going to it because they they refuse that gift. They refuse God. But he died. He died for everybody's sin, and that that offer is out there for anyone that will take it. He says he is our petition. <laughs> miss that word propitiation for our sins and not only for ours only but also for the sins of the whole world and hereby we do know that we know him this is how you know if you know him if we keep his commandments if we keep his commandments he that say i know him and keep not his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. But whoever keepeth his word in him, verily is the love of God perfected. This is how the love of God is perfected in you when you obey God. Just like you're supposed to, we're supposed to, we're supposed to obey. We're supposed to obey the authorities. We're supposed to obey our parents. Uh, that, that comes with a promise. <laughs> Obeying our parents comes with a promise, you know. And also, we're... I mean, ultimately, you know, we're supposed to obey God. And this is good. Obey is a good word. And it says, here is the love of God perfected when we obey him. And hereby that we know that we are in him. This is how you know that you're in him. That you want to keep his commandments. That you want to follow what God has for you. But whoever keepeth his word in him verily is the love of God perfected. Okay, let's go on to six. He that say he abideth in him ought to himself also walk even as he walked. So we're, we're supposed to not just be hearers of the word, but doers of the word. We're supposed to walk like Jesus walked. It says that we're supposed to take up our cross daily. You know, this is, this is something we continually do. Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, but an O commandment which you have had from the beginning. That O commandment is, the flies bother me. <laughs> I'm going to have to uh, swoosh that fly. Is the O commandment is the word which you have heard from the beginning. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the the darkness is past, and the true light sh now shineth. The true light is Jesus. He that say that he is in the light and hateth his brother is in darkness even unto now. We're not to hate. We're not to hate. You know, when when you speak against sin, you're not hating anyone. That's 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 love. That's love. But it says you're not to hate. You're not to hate your brother. We're supposed to love them. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light. So this is how you show that your love for your brother is that you abide in the light. You do what God has called you to do. You walk, you keep the commandments, uh, you speak the truth in love, you, uh, you share the word of God. It says, he that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is no occasion of stumbling in him. You're not going to stumble in sin if you're walking in the light. But he that hateth his brother, if you hate your brother, you're not going to do that. You're going to be sinful. You're going to do all the bad things. You're going to walk in the darkness. Um, and don't think, you know, 
when we walk in sin, don't think that it doesn't affect other people. It does. What you do has an effect on everyone around you. And it says, he, he that hateth his brother is in darkness and walketh in darkness and knoweth not. And we're, we're not talking about walking at night. <laughs> not talking about walking at night, but we're talking about walking in sin. And it says the, that darkness has blinded his eyes, that sin blinded his eyes. I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. I write unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. And I write unto you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. When we walk in Christ, we're more than overcomers. We overcome the sin through Christ who strengthens us. That's the scripture. We overcome. We're more than overcomers. You can overcome anything because when you walk in Christ, it's his strength. It's his strength we're allowing. We're not doing it in our own strength. We're doing it in his strength. We're more than overcomers. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, and when he's talking about the world, we're, we're not talking about, you know, you know, loving, loving the things around us like the trees and the, and the flowers and the birds and the animals. He's not talking about that. We're talking about the worldly system, the... Uh, the love of uh, accumulating things, the, 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 the things that are not of God. You know, don't, we're not supposed to, you know, that first commandment uh, is to love thy God with all thy heart, thy mind, their, your soul, and then to love your neighbor as yourself. These, these, the whole Bible is written on those two commandments. Well, the first one is to love God. Don't put anything, anything in this world, anything in this world before your relationship with Christ. That relationship comes first. So don't love, don't be a lover of the world. Don't be a lover of the things of the world. But, but, but everything. Don't put anything before God. Put God before everything, and you do. And that should be at the forefront of your mind is, is, you know, are my actions, you know, my thoughts, my words, my deeds, what I buy, what I sell, what I do, you know, how is that going to affect my relationship with God? Is this righteousness? Is this good? Or is this not good? You know, these, these are the things that, that we need to think of, you know, love, not the things of the world, neither the things that are in the world. It says, for any man that love the world, and then the love of the Father is not in him. You know, we're just, it says, that, it says in this word of, of God that we're sojourners. Uh, it means like we're travelers. We're travelers, you know, like, um, uh, I can't think of that, that stinking movie. Uh, you know, but we're, we're, we're our, our true home is in heaven with God. Our true home is in heaven with God. We're only here temporary. And so, you know, think of that. Think of this as, as temporary and, and that, that our true home uh, is in heaven. And, and so um, the things of this world are perishing and passing away. So we don't put too much stock in it. You know, uh, everything in this world could be gone in an instant. Um, uh, but the love that you have and the love that you shared... That can be an eternity. That's something that lasts. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but of the world. And the world passes the way. Just like I was saying, the world, it all could be gone in an instant. And it is. It is gone. It's passing away. And the world passes the way. And the lust thereof, but he that doth the will of God abideth forever. That's right. We are, we are made to live 
forever. And if we abide in Christ, we're going to live forever. Even when we pass from this earth, our, we're, we're more than this flesh. We're more than this flesh and blood. We're more than this. There, and, and, and we will live. If we're abiding in Christ, we're going to live forever. We're only here on earth for a short amount of time. Make the most of the time that we're here on earth doing God's will. And then it says we're going to run that race to win the prize. We're going to run this race of life to win that prize of Christ. So do everything. Set off your course, your, your race to win that prize of Christ and eternity in heaven. Little children, this is verse 18, little children, it is the last time. Whoa, whoa. that's so true today. We're so we're the, we're the last times. You know, it's like I can't look at what's going on in the world. I know you probably don't pay too much attention to the news and what's going on in the world, but it's, oh my goodness. In the last time, and it goes on to say, and, that, and you have heard the Antichrist shall come. Even now there are many Antichrists whereby we know that it is in the last time. And we're in the last of the, you know, the last, it's been the last day since Jesus was here, but it's even so much more. We're in the last minutes, last seconds. You know, this, this earth is passing away and soon we'll be gone. And, um, but even, even if we were, you know, if time goes on and we're allowed to live for the stint of our life, uh, it's just, Compared to an eternity, even if we live to 100 years old, even compared to eternity, that's nothing. That's just a breath. And so, you know, I'd encourage you to live, one, to make the most of whatever life God gives you here, whatever time we have on this earth, doing his will, pleasing God, walking in righteousness, and holiness, where there's joy and peace and contentment, and run that race to win that eternity. But it says little children... Go back to 18 again. Little children, it is the last time. And as you have heard, the Antichrist shall come. And even now, there are many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. And it says, they went out from, uh, from, um, from among us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have no doubt have continued with us. But they went out, and they that they might be manifested, that they were not all of us. And this is how you know who really is of God and who really is not. You, you can tell, it says, by their fruits that you will know them. If somebody is walking, and this is another reason why you've got to know the word of God so that you can discern one, good and evil, right and wrong, and who is and who is not, is not serving God, you sure do not want to follow anyone. You know, Grandma wants you to be a leader. And the only way that you can lead is through Christ. But if you're going to follow, follow those who are following Christ. You know, and, and the only way you're going to be able to discern who is and who is not following Christ is knowing this word of God and comparing everything in this world to this. This is your direction for life. <laughs> you know, and this is why, you, why Grandma wants to encourage you to read the Word of God for yourself so that you know it. Goes on to say in verse 21, I have not written unto you because you know not the truth, but because you know it. And that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. He is the Antichrist. So he's, he's basically telling you, telling you that this is a this is kind of a good litmus, a good discernment. If somebody is saying that Jesus was not Christ, that he is not God, then that person is of, you know, they have that Antichrist spirit. Because when the when the true Antichrist comes, he will he will be denying Christ. He will be denying denying Jesus. Don't follow him. <laughs> and don't follow anybody that denies Jesus. But whoever denieth the Son, that same hath not the Father. 
but he that acknowledges the Son has the Father also. So if you acknowledge Jesus, you have God. But if you you do not claim Jesus as God, then you do not have God. Let us therefore, uh, let that therefore abide in you. Let it abide in you, which ye have heard from the beginning. If that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, you also shall con continue in the Son and in the Father. And that's what Grandma wants, that you continue in with God, that you continue in with Jesus all the days of your life that you continue in Christ. And this is the promise that he has promised us, even eternal life. Because this life is short. I want eternal life. I want eternal life in Christ. These things that I have written unto you concerning them that seduce you, but the... But the anointing which you have received of him abideth in you, and ye need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you of all things. He's talking about the Holy Spirit, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as hath taught you that you shall abide in him. And now, little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear, you may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. God's coming soon. And when you abide in him, when he shows up, you're, you're going to have confidence and you will not be ashamed. But all those that have not put their trust in God will be ashamed. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone that doth righteousness is born of him. And in chapter 3, Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world know not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now we are the sons of God. He calls us his sons. He calls us daughters. And it does not yet appear that we shall what we shall be. We don't, we kind of have a glimpse, but we don't really understand what it is that we're going to, how we're going to truly be in heaven, but I can't wait to see. It says, Beloved, now we are the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. We're going to be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope, this hope in him, purify himself even as he is pure. You know, that, that hope of eternal life, that hope of life in Christ, that hope of his coming back for us, that hope that if we die, that we go into him. Everybody that has that hope purifies himself. Not dirties himself, <laughs> but purifies himself. That's walking with righteousness and holiness, doing what is right, doing what is good. Whoever commits sin transgresses also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. And ye know that he that it was manifest to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. There's no sin in God. There's no sin in Jesus. So whoever abideth in him, abide, to abide, to you. Right now, you're abiding with your parents. You're abiding in them. So you, you, but this is talking about abiding with Christ. If you want to abide with Christ, you want to dwell with him. It says, whoever abideth in him, sinneth not. Whoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither know him. So that's the thing, you know, um, uh, those people that are living a sinful life, they do not know God. They do not know that their sin is going to cost them. And that's one of the reasons why we speak out and tell them that, um, tell them about the love of God and the sacrifice for their sin, but also that, that, that to receive Christ 
there, you, we've got to repent. We've got to turn away from it and walk with him. Um, it's a choice. And Grandma wants you to make good choices. So little children, let no man deceive you. He that doth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. But he that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the very beginning. He did it from the very beginning he was sinning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. So whoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. When we give our life to Christ, when we give our life to him and we commit ourselves unto him, we get born again. And it's a, it's a, spiritual, it's a spiritual rebirth. We get born again of God, and we don't want to sin. And it's in that Holy Spirit that dwells in us, that pricks our conscience, um, that when we do wrong, we need to turn from it. But the more, it talks about what sin does. When we continue to walk in sin, you know, at first our conscience is pricked and it's, you know, and it bothers us. But the more we walk in sin, the harder our conscience gets hard. Our heart gets hard. It's like seared. And we no longer can hear that Holy Spirit saying, don't do this, don't do this, don't do that. <laughs> you know, God's written his commandments in our heart. We know what is right and what is wrong. But the more we walk in the wrong, the easier it is to do the wrong because our conscience is seared. But the more we walk in the light and obey in God, the easier it is to walk in obedience to God. The, the easier it is for us to hear God and to hear that Holy Spirit speak to us in that inner man and, and, and lead us and guide us. The more we're in tune to what he says, the more we read this word, the more we do it, what it says, the more we walk, the easier it is to walk with God. And, and, and the more life we have in us. And so it says, whoever is born of God does not commit sin. For his seed, God's seed, remains in, remains in him and he cannot sin because he is born of God. In this, the children of God manifest are manifested and the children of the devil. So you can see, you can see, you can discern who is of God and who is not. If you're walking in, you're, I mean, it doesn't mean that we don't have air, okay? But if you're walking in continual sin, you know that person's not walking with God. It says, in this the children of God are manifest and the children of the devil. So you can see clearly, you can man they're manifest. You can see clearly who's walking with God and who is not. But whoever does not does not righteousness is not of God, neither is he that no either and it also goes on to say that you're not walking with God, you don't love your brother. And neither is he that loveth not his brother. When you're walking in sin, you're hurting somebody. You're not just hurting yourself. You're hurting the people around you, and you do not love them. You do not. That's not love. That's not love. It's not love of your parents, not love of your brothers and sisters, not love of your families, not love of your neighbor. can't be loving your neighbor as yourself if you're walking in sin because you're sinning against not only God, but you're sinning against your neighbor. If you're lying, stealing, chilling, committing adultery, you know, whatever whatever sin that you're, you're, you're doing, it's not only, ultimately, it's against, that sin is against God, but there's usually, I mean, you cannot sin and it not affect other people. Um, you know, if, if I sin, it not only affects me, but if it affects everybody around me, it would even affect you. Uh, it would uh, affect uh, uh, your papas, 
you know, uh, uh, affect the, you know, depending on what it is. You know, it's the sin is, sin is, sin is not love. There's no way that you could be walking in a sin and be loving. And so you're not loving God, you're not loving your neighbor. So, but to, to love God and to love your neighbor, you need to, to walk in righteousness and holiness and follow what God says and not sin. And then we're doing good and not evil. And anyway, it goes on verse 11. For this is the, verse chapter 3, verse 11. For this is the message that ye heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Not as Cain. <laughs> Cain slew his brother. Not as Cain. Don't, don't do that. Who was of the wicked one and slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him? Why did he do this? Basically is what it's asking. Why did Cain kill his brother? Because his own works were evil and his brother's righteous. You know, and he was jealous. He was jealous of his brother. Let's marvel not, my brethren, if the world hates you. And as the people of the world, the sinning people, you know, they're automatically going to hate Christians. This is, this is, it goes on to say, Marvel not, brethren, if the world hates you. For we know that we have passed from death into life, and because we love the brethren, he that loveth not his brother abideth in death. And whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. So you just have to have hate in your heart to be a murderer. You don't even have to do the murder. So whoever hateth his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us. God laid down his life for us. And it goes on to us that we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. We should, we should lay our lives down for the brethren. But whoever hateth this world's good, whoever hates the good in this world, and see his brother have need. When you see your brother have need, and shut it up his bowels of compassion. Basically, you see somebody has need and you do nothing. You ignore it. Does the, does the love of God really dwell in you? It says that, how dwelleth the love of God in him? You know, um, if, if we know to do good and not do it, that is a sin. If we see a need, we need to, we need to do what we can uh, to help. Our brethren, my little children, let us not love in word and neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. We need to do something. If you're a, you can't be just a hearer of the word of God. You've got to be a doer, and it requires action. It requires action. God says, take up that cross daily and follow after him. You need, there's action there. You need, you, if you see someone in need, you, you need to do what you can do to help that need. And hereby we know that we are in the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. This is how you can have a surety in your hearts. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. Beloved, if our heart condemns us not, we have confidence towards God. And whatever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments. This is, this is, well, this is a promise of God. that you want, When you walk in righteousness and you and walk in holiness and you follow after Christ, that we can go before the throne room of grace and ask God. You know, if we ask, if God, if we have a need... We have a need and we go before it says we have a need, we go before God and ask him. He's he's not he's not a, a mean God. He's not gonna uh give us rocks or stones or snakes. He's gonna he's gonna take care of our need. So it says whatever we ask, we we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do not and do those things which are pleasing in his sight. 
I could tell you all the great things that Grandma has asked of God and that God's given me. Actually, some of you are some of the things that Grandma has asked. You know, I prayed. Prayed, 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 prayed. Prayed continually. For Grandma to to give to give Amanda children and my oldest daughter Amanda and so Bella and Lily I know are good and perfect gifts from God because Grandma asked and I asked and I asked and I asked and God gave. And uh, I know I prayed Austin on Tina. <laughs> I told her, it's so funny. It's so funny. I, oh, she laughed. I told her, oh, now would be a perfect time for you to have a baby. And she, <laughs> and she said, she said, no. <laughs> and she, and I said, well, if the Lord wills. And she, she was like, oh, no, the Lord not will it. And sure enough, sure enough. It wasn't, I don't know, six or eight weeks later, she come back and told me she was pregnant. It was great. I prayed Austin on her mom. <laughs> don't mess with grandma. She'll pray a baby on you. <laughs> uh, I know, I know every one of my grandchildren, every one of them are a blessing of God. They are fruits of the womb. And I, you know, I know for sure that Several of you were answered prayers, answered prayers that I had prayed specifically for. And know what good gifts. All, all my grandbabies are good gifts. Very, very good gifts and blessings of God. And so I know that God hears my prayers. He, is, he has heard my prayers so many times and has answered them. And uh, so I... I tell you that that walking with God, you know, if you, I don't know how people get through life without God. I don't know because this life is full of trials. But even there's not been a trial in my life that God has not seen me through. And uh, and if there comes up one where I don't get through it, I know I, I still have the hope. I'm going to heaven. I still have the hope that I'm going to heaven. So, and I've got something better to look forward to. So, you know, I just encourage you um, to seek the Lord while He might be found. To, uh, and then if you have a need, call upon God, and He will hear you. He will hear. And don't think that you just pray once. You know, maybe just once. But, uh, but I know a lot of my prayers are prayers that I continually to pray. <laughs> I continually pray. I'm still waiting for God to, to, uh, and I know he will in his perfect timing because God is good. And what I'm asking for is, is good and it's of him. I mean, I'm not going to ask for something uh, bad. I'm not going to ask for something evil. I'm going to ask for something good, not just good for me, but good for uh, my family or the, the people around me, uh, people I work with. Uh, people I come across, you know, Grandma ask for things that know that God would want to give, and um, and so I mean that's that's part of it too, <laughs> you know, is is learning to ask the right for the right things uh, and for the right reasons. But it says, uh, beloved, if our heart condemneth not then we have the confidence towards God that whatever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things which are pleasing in his sight. And this is the commandment that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandment and that he that keep his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him, and hereby we know that he abideth in us in the spirit which hath given us. So anyway, Grandma's going to stop there.
through chapter 3. That was First John chapters 1, 2, and 3. And uh, I think this is a really good teaching. I might have went a little longer than I should. But know that Grandma loves you. And Grandma just wants that word of God to dwell in you. And so I want you to, to not even hear what I say, but I want you to pick up your Bible. And I know Grandma has probably given every one of you a Bible. And if you need a new Bible, let Grandma know. Grandma will get you one. So um, anyway, call me, text me, message me. Let me know what you think. Love you.